Good morning, everyone. Continuing with this uh, essay series that we are uh, sharing with you, the third video that we are sharing over here is the importance of diversity when you are writing an essay. Like I said in the very first uh, video of the series, when you are writing, you should not repeat yourself. Any topic that you are writing on, you should be able to look at that essay from multiple dimensions, from different perspectives. Without that diversity, your essay becomes very monotonous. Your essay becomes very dull, very boring to read, as a result of which the evaluator will lose interest and you unfortunately will lose marks. To explain this, let me put it slightly differently. Some students write very well, they are very well read. If you speak to them, they, are, they seem to be very intelligent. They share things that you never heard of. Yet when they write an essay, why do their essays not score well? Why are they not able to get the marks that such a student, a bright, intelligent, brilliant student should get for three reasons. Number one, because their thought process is unidimensional. Their thought process is unidirectional. When they look at a topic, they consider the topic only from one perspective. They have a very narrow view. There is no diversity. Second, because their thought process is unidimensional, these students in their essay end up repeating themselves. Like I was saying in the second uh, uh, video that, uh, that we had in the series, there was an example of uh, Julian Assange and Edward Snowden. Two different people, two different uh, contexts and yet the thought is the same. Students in the pressure of the exam hall without realizing write similar things over and over again. They think that they've added diversity and yet when an outsider, a third person reads the essay, it seems to be very repetitive. And this then number three leads to monotony and monotony of course is bound to lead to a decline in your scores. How do you overcome these problems? In one word which is given right over there, ensure diversity. Now this part, this is just some basic understanding. This part please understand a little more carefully. Simple topic, uh, I don't remember which year, two, three years back this topic was asked. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. In fact, if I remember correctly, this has been used twice now in the essay paper. Once many years back and once two, three years back. Now, if we say hand that rocks the cradle rules the world, in the cradle, who do you have? In the cradle, I have a child. So the hand that rocks the cradle, the hand that moves the cradle, the hand that takes care of the child is who? Very narrow thinking would be mother. I just said unidirectional thinking. Now, what is unidirectional, unidimensional thinking? Many people will interpret this topic only from the perspective of a mother. That if a child is in a cradle, I hope you understand what cradle means, you know, that sort of a cot in which we place a small infant and then you shake the cradle gently so the child can rest, can relax, can sleep. Many people, I would call it to some extent even a regressive mindset, believe that this is the work only of the mother. Some students who go one step forward will also say father and the two of them put together is what we call your parents. Now, if I want to look at this topic from the perspective of parenting, just from the perspective of parenting, there are many people I can talk about. I can talk about Putli Bhai Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi's mother. I can talk about Richard Williams, his daughters, Serena and Venus Williams. I think they need no introduction. I can say that this is the role parents play in your life. Now, a student who repeats, a student who does not have diversity, what will they do? They will say that over here, I'm talking about maybe politicians or maybe I'm talking about statesmen. Then they will say that with Richard Williams, I'm talking about the field of sports. Another student will give me the example of Thomas Alva Edison. And they will say that here I'm talking about technology. Unfortunately, you're not. In all these points, all that you're talking about is the importance of parents. Your essay is repetitive and you will not get the marks that you should. On the other hand, how do you ensure diversity? By looking at the same topic from multiple perspectives. Second, for example, students who write better now, who are not unidimensional, who have diversity. Number two, they'll write about the family. The difference between Indian parenting and Japanese parenting. In India, what do we do? Helicopter parenting. Parents are available, parents are present in almost every aspect of their lives. You take a census in an average classroom and ask the students that when you had to go to class 11th, how many of you were given complete independence in choosing the subjects you would take in class 11th? 
Many students will not answer with a yes. Many students even today. And on the other hand, what do you have in Japanese upbringing? That from a young age, the child is treated at par with the parents. He is not considered as inferior. He is given more independence. Why? Because tomorrow then he'll have the ability to rule the world in any uh, walk of life that he enters. Third, I can talk about leaders. I can talk, you can call them leaders, you can call them influencers, you can call them role models, whatever you want to call them. For example, Jacinda Ardern, uh, Prime Minister of New Zealand during the COVID pandemic, exceptional handling of the COVID pan uh, pandemic. You can talk about Mother Teresa. And of course, she needs no introduction, no explanation. Every no, everyone knows what she's done. You can talk about peer groups, the hand that rocks the cradle, someone who nurtures you, someone who mentors you, someone who guides you. That is Krishna and Arjun right before the battle of Mahabharat or their friendship almost throughout the Mahabharat. You can talk about the government. If you want to rule the world for a country, the hand that rocks the cradle, in the cradle if it, is, it is the population, the citizens of the country, it is the government that rocks the cradle. And what does the government do? It empowers us, it enriches us, it nurtures us, it, it protects us. And here you have innumerable government policies, the right to education, Ayushman Bharat, PMJ, you have the Mudra scheme, you have the Ujwala Yojana, you have Koshal Vikas Yojana, n number of government schemes. What are they doing? They are educating us, they are keeping our health safe, they are making us financially independent, they are, they are protecting our environment. They are empowering us so that tomorrow we as a group of people called Indians have the ability to rule the world in any walk of life. You can talk about international institutions. For example, the role the WHO should have played but did not play during the COVID pandemic. In the COVID pandemic, probably the one thing we'll remember most importantly is the complete failure of leadership. Leadership by institutions such as the WHO, leadership by superpowers such as the US. Instead of helping the rest of the world out, you are busy in vaccine nationalism. You're busy in vaccine hoarding. You're threatening India for hydroxychloroquine. That is not fair. And if you're not able to do that, you certainly will not enjoy. You will not have the ability anymore to rule the world. These content is not important. This, these points are not important. Please remember again the one word that was written. Let me write that myself over here. To be able to score well, to be able to write a good essay, your writing will need diversity. For diversity, you cannot restrict yourself to only one perspective. If you restrict yourself to one perspective, your essay will be correct. It will not be scoring. So ensure that you get the diversity. Again, the question students will have is, how do I generate this content? How do I think of so much content sitting in the exam itself? Or even if I'm sitting at home, if you give me a topic, how do I think on multiple perspectives? That's why in the first video of the series, I told you, number one, of course, you'll have to study. And number two, you will need essay specific content. And if you're not able to get that content, like I told you, this is what we give you in each of the handouts for every class that we have. Because I know that, again, these are simple, I think Krishna Arjun, everyone knows about, Mother Teresa, everyone knows about, Richard Williams, his daughters are extremely famous, WHO COVID, everyone knows about. Remembering all this content in the right structure at the time when it matters the most is what might be a problem for you. All right, so the studies you'll have to put in. We can't then please go through the handouts that we give you. And again, as a reminder, the essay course is starting on the 23rd of June. These details are... Uh, these details are available on the Bajiram website also. And like I've said it at the cost of repeating myself, let me nonetheless still say, when you visit the Bajiram uh, website, uh, on the page where they give the details of the essay course, there is an evaluated script which I have uploaded there. Please go through the script to understand again what students write, what small mistakes they might make, and how they learn to rectify the mistakes and improve upon them in the future. Thank you.